is Al Kahtani, PhD, Petroleum Scientist from Saudi Aramco, and our moderator, Dr. Alfian Novianto from Nano Center Indonesia Research. Next. Okay, so this is the rundown for today's webinar. Uh, there will be a prologue from the moderator. And from Dr. Hassan Al Kahtani. And there are a Q&A session that will be in uh, English language. So please prepare if you want to ask to the speakers. And closing statement from the speakers and ending. Next. So uh, if you want to get the certificate, a certificate, please subscribe and like to our YouTube channel. Next. Okay. Uh, this is the biography of uh, Hassan, our speakers, uh, Hassan L. S. Al Kahtani, and uh, from here, I will pass to the Dr. Alfia Novianto. Please, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fikri. Yeah. Uh, I cannot see Dr. Hassan. Is already in here? Previously, is already in here, right? Probably Dr. Hassan still in the brick out rooms. No, no, I am here. Okay, oh, okay. Good to hear you, bro. <laughs> Go ahead, that's fine. Okay, good. Okay, thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. So, in this webinar, 2029 webinar, we have a very special guest. My friends, my best friend from uh, Saudi Arabia, we have a good time when in Japan, so we, we work in, in same institute, National Institute for Material Science. Now he already in Saudi Arabia as a petroleum scientist. And before we start, we go, before we go to the main season, so I will introduce about Nano Center Indonesia to, to our special guests. So I will share my screen. Okay, what which which one is okay? So, is you can see my screen, right? Everyone see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. I will continue. So this is Nano Center Indonesia. So Nano Center Indonesia is a foundation actually, and uh, uh, our business, uh, our location is near the Greater Jakarta area. We are we are in the city called South Tangerang. So our location is I mark with the red dot in here. You can see. You can see in here this red dot is the, our location. So. We are in the Puspitek area uh, in South Tangerang. So Puspitek is National Science and Technology Park, belong to Ministry of Research and Technology, Republic of Indonesia. In here, in the Puspitek, we can we have several campus of the National Research Institutes, such as uh, Indonesian Institute of Sciences, Agency on Agency for the Assessment and Application of Technology, and also National Nuclear Energy Agency. So is a huge. Uh, national National Science Park. So, uh, Nano Center Indonesia is uh, founded by Dr. Nurul Taufik Rahman, he already professor now. Uh, I remember that he, when he just uh, back for good from Japan to Indonesia in 2005, he 
he established the uh, laboratory we call we call the advanced material and nanotechnology laboratory i'm the i'm the uh, first employee of dr nurul taufik rahman so nano center indonesia we have two kind of business the first one is nano venture the director is dr suryan daru mr suryan daru uh, the nano venture business is about the incubations and also the acceleration of the startup so we have about maybe eight or eight startup in 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 the nano ventures all the startup is uh, office in the nanoplex in the our building this is our building nanoplex we have four building uh, fourth floor building in uh, uh, in, in nanoplex so and then the second one is nano center in the institute is about is a research 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 based institute so we do main our, our business is research so we have four topics existing topic the first one is processing and characterization of advanced material such as silicocarbide boron carbide hydroxyapatite and magnesium ferrite for the application in the structural or or functional the second one is the extraction of the element from ore. So we also extract the iron from uh, iron ore or iron sand, nickel from the laterite and other things. We also do kind of the skin silico analysis of herbal based agents. And the other one is mechanical alloying and chemical milling of complex elements so is in coating or maybe we, we make another uh, new, new, a new paste. You know. This is our teams. So we have one professor and four PhD, three master, and other and the other is a bachelor degree. All the bachelor degree is a, a pursue the master degree. Maybe in two or three years we will have a master degree. So this is our research. This is our research uh, research, uh, research results. So we can see this is I uh, this is manganese ferrite. So we synthesize from the manganese ore. So manganese ore, we, we, we make the manganese oxide and then we mix with the ferro iron oxide to make manganese ferrite. You can see in here, use, we're using, all of, of course, mechanical milling. So in here, uh, the mill uh, powders is very fine and the distribution of Fa, iron, and also manganese is very uh, homogeneous compared to the unmilled one. That's, for, that's why at, we can see in here at one at 100 degrees C, the manganese ferrite already formed. Compared to unmill one, it already start to form at 1,000 degrees C. So there's 200 degrees C difference. This is another result. So we centering of the silicon carbide with the addition of new additive. So we can see in here we using two kind of uh, furnace, hot pressing, and then spark plasma centering. We can see in here using spark plasma centering, we can obtain very dense. Uh, structures and also very smooth grain size, very fine grain size compared to the hot press. And it should to be mentioned that temperature is lower than uh, hot pressing is in only 1700 degrees C and here 1750 degrees C. And the time is very, very fast, it's only 10 minutes. And for hot pressing, is it needs uh, one hour. And the density is very remarkable. So we can reach almost near the theoretical density, 99.8% compared to 93.8% in the hot pressing furnace. Okay, this is the mechanical mechanochemical of calcium titanate. So we will demonstrate that how we make the calcium titanate from calcium carbonate powder and titanium oxide powder. So after 10 hours of milling, we can see the peak of the uh, calcium carbon is already disappears and we observe a new peak as calcium titanate. So without any heating, just milling for 10 hours, we, we can form a new phase calcium titanate using mechanical milling. Unfortunately, we observe the, the uh, impurity FA because the jar and the ball that we use during mechanical milling is made from stainless steel. And in here we can see we can make we can make the calcium titanate uh, paste single paste calcium titanate without any presence of the calcium oxide or TiO2 or, or TiO2 
of course we also also the ferrum uh, iron oxide due to the, the impurity from the mechan from the jar and bowl in here this is the, our new paper so we observe the we investigate the uh, propolis as a inhibitor for the SARS-CoV-2 this is this is a very new this is very new so in here we can see after our studies so the uh, propolis is very good to uh, virus to enter our body our body so it's a good uh, it, this is this is the just the in, in silico uh, analysis so we need either another further study to to make it clear that this is good for the preventing the SARS-CoV-2. This is our facility. So we have we have uh, many kind of ball milling. This is from nitrate ball milling. This is sacrum mill, and we have another uh, type of ball milling. So we have the past particle size analyzer in here. We also have a furnace, high temperature furnace. This is the oven we just bought uh, recently. You know, this is the uh, main exterior, then this is the uh, uh, film hood. So uh, in this year also, we, we have planned to buy some new equipment such as the X-ray diffractions, X-ray fluorescence, and also STM EDS. Hopefully, maybe in September or maybe in no, October, we will have a new equipment. That's, that's, that's all. Thank you uh, for the introduction of Abot Nano Center Indonesia. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Better sense. So, you have about maximum forty-five minutes to give the presentations. So time okay. is. Yeah. Just one second. Okay. So Dr. Hassan is have uh, has many experience about the manipulation of atom. So I, I remember when I was at NIMS with Dr. Hassan, he made uh, flowers from the uh, 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 gold atom. Terasan.
Hello Avian, you hear me? Hello brother, yeah, yeah. Yes. Please, please. Uh, mm. Can I start? Sorry bro. Unstable. Hmm. We have unstable connection. I'm very sorry about this inconvenience. Hello, Avian. Oke, okay. Dr. Hasan, please continue. Yes, yes. Yeah, thanks Fabian for uh, nice introduction and it's my pleasure having uh, with you guys, brothers and sisters. And it's my pleasure to have some of my friends are from Indonesia and we have a great science working together. I guess it's clear now, is it? Afian? Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you, bro. We hear you. Yeah, yeah, brother Hassan, we can hear you. Yeah, before starting my presentation, yeah, what? For starting my presentation, the video you showed him, yeah, actually, that's a video now. For my presentation, now, what's the video show actually? Before my presentation, before starting the video, Ya, yeah, tinggal koneksi problem with the last. Yeah. Hello, Avian. Yeah, it's very clear now. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what's, what's going on. Yeah, please continue again from the beginning. I think uh, many people cannot yeah. hear. Yeah, no worries. Thanks a lot uh, for uh, inviting me, and it's my pleasure to be amongst you guys. I mean, what you saw here. Uh, I need you guys to just imagine, I mean, what's the size you saw here? Well, I will be talking about advanced nanomaterials where every atom counts. I'm working now in petro as a petroleum scientist in Saudi Aramco. When we're talking about uh, uh, nanomaterials, we are not talking about uh, nanoparticles with uh, a very uh, lots of atoms. We, we precisely talking about nanocluster. 
which is starting from one nanometer, uh, starting from one atoms to a hundred atoms, is very advanced nanomaterials. And the, I mean, the objective behind this uh, nano cluster is we using for a production of the clean energy. We use it as a catalyst. We enhance the catalytic activity for it by actually deposit them on uh, metal oxide. And we, uh, we converging the water actually by water and splitting to hydrogen and the CO2 emission to a methanol. The current renewable energy, it has a lots of issue and challenges about the storage of the energy, either the solar cell or the, the wind itself. But this kind of gas, by using this kind of catalyst, we can store it as a gas and we can have it in day and night. Then why we use a cluster? We have already industrial uh, catalyst and this is industrial catalyst, it's existing now. But the problem with this uh, industrial catalyst is a huge of wasting of materials and you don't know what's the catalytic active uh, area of this uh, uh, catalyst. And that's why we've been changing to actually uh, using the nano cluster and the precise nano cluster. And we support them on the metal oxide to increase the catalytic activity of this one. And it's have been approval in the literature. It's depending on the number of the atoms inside the nano cluster can have and relate to a different catalytic activities. Like gold nine is different than gold eight and different than gold 11. But the previous literature review, they use, uh, use it in the gas phase while to reach the demand of the industrial catalyst, we need to synthesize them chemically. And this is the difference between what has been reported in the literature in the gas phase and what we produce here. Uh, it's a catalytic uh, activities for the uh, cluster as a chemically synthesized. And to have this cluster uh, as stable as much as we can, we have to protect this with the ligands. And these ligands around the cluster, it's actually uh, for stabilizing the, the, the gold core. But once we need to do the catalytic reaction, we need to remove the ligands to have the core of the gold is a naked uh, uh, to be in the catalytic reaction. We need to study actually uh, the geometry and the structure because every catalytic activity is different uh, compared with the size and geometry and the structure as well as the electronic structure. And that's why becoming different by counting the atoms of the nanocluster itself. And we need to tune that size of the regime to have their properties to understand their catalytic activities. This is a uh, project overview. It's involved like five, six different universities and institutes. And it's funded by the Australian government and US Army. And it goes through a multiple spectroscopic and microscopic techniques, as well as the application of the photocatalytic activity as well. I will mention not all of them, but some of them, especially about spectroscopy, XPS, and uh, microscopy, STEM, and STM, AFM, and, uh, and also some of the results from the, the application itself. We need to, as, as I mentioned before, we need this cluster to be deposited on the method, which has a ligand. We either immerse it on the solution or by the bulb nozzle or by evaporation, we're trying a different method of the deposition with the different uh, criteria. And we generate them actually uh, with a different metal. But I will just focus on the gold nine on this presentation because this is the core of my research. It, it has been producing, I mean, uh, the group we, we work with as a chemist, they're producing even gold eight and nine and 11. It's exactly gold eight and nine and 11. They measure it and they screen it by NMR and by also a different uh, mass spectrometer. And what they have, the, uh, the purification, it's a bit difficult actually for this uh, uh, nano cluster to have it in a precise atoms. We deposit them 
and we remove the ligands because at the end we need uh, the access to the the the, the gold uh, core for the cluster itself, and we use it for the application. We we use a different substrate. We use a titania. We use a nano sheet titania B twenty five, which is NATS titan nanoparticles. And we do sometimes a pre uh, treatment to actually have this cluster attached to the surface and not easy to immobilize. And uh, we do a post treatment. We heat it uh, like, for example, 200 degrees to remove the ligands. And we study uh, by the different techniques to have what's happened to the size and to the regime, to the electronic structure of this cluster. Our main goal is having this gold cluster at the end as a naked uh, gold cluster, which is removed by the ligands and is a, a easy access, but without any aggregation of this cluster. This is as it is. We deposit them on the metal oxide and we remove the ligands and we aim to have this cluster uh, as individual uh, this is where uh, the unique of the catalytic activities of every precise nanocluster. We use the XPS, and as you know, XPS is used for the chemical elemental peaks, and uh, we can, it's, it's just a photon, we're ejecting the electrons and studying uh, and recording the binding energy actually for the photon overcome this kind of binding energy of the electron. But, uh, and this is our machine there in, in Australia. And for the XBS, we have also the MIS and the UBS. And the MIS, we study the outmost layer, which I will not talk about in this presentation for the time. But this is one of the unique techniques with you, where we use a metastable helium to have a very, uh, actually ejected electron at the outmost layer. The depth is just a zero nanometer, it's just an, on the outmost layer. While the XBS, it can be penetrated to like two or three nanometers, depend on the electron uh, main path uh, of the metal itself. Because we have a very small uh, nanocluster, Sometimes the intensity of this uh, peak on the XPS is not that much. That's why we move to the synchrotron XPS. Synchrotron XPX is a huge radiation that uh, we, we can narrow actually the energy gap and have uh, a huge intensity to show us uh, this amount because we deposit a very little amount to avoid the aggregation of the nanocluster. We've done a study on the synchrotron and uh, we show actually there is a huge difference between the gold eight and nine and even 11 and gold 101 atoms depend uh, on the actually the, the peak. And this is what's called the size effect of the XBS. And this is related to the final state effect. What does my, the final state effect? It's mean that the cluster itself getting uh, action on the charge state when the photon hit, and it has been a period of time to get a relaxation. And this relaxation is actually a fingerprint of this different cluster. Uh, and the peak actually of the, of the gold itself, it's, uh, if you're looking for the bulk gold, usually it's 84 uh, electron volt, the binding energy while we saw a shift actually of this 84 to a higher binding energy. And this is related to the final state effect of every single uh, cluster. Once we get to 86 uh, and above, this is like oxidation and this is a chemical shift, but we are not reaching the chemical shift. We are reaching the size depending uh, uh, on the XPS. And this is how you interpret it as, uh, uh, as uh, a different sizes will behave on a different in the XPS itself. And we move to the STEM, scanning transmission electron microscope. First, we do the done in oxide, as I mentioned, to increase the catalytic activities of our gold nanocluster. We start with the unique titan nano sheet, which is uh, special for the NIMS uh, Institute, where we have uh, just a single layer 
of the nano sheet with a huge wide range and we deposit our gold cluster. The thickness is just 1.2 nanometer of this uh, sheet exactly. We use the scanning transmission electron microscope, and this is as aberration corrected actually, where we can reach to the atomic resolution. And um, this atomic resolution uh, is depend on the electron beam diameter, which is uh, around 0.1, which applicable to uh, the actually the imaging of the atom itself. And um, this is was in NIMS in Japan and we can actually saw our gold nanocluster depositing on titanium nano sheet, and we classify them to three category. The first category, as you saw here, and what you're measuring now is, what you saw now is the white spot is just the single atom itself. And the scale bar here is 0.5 nanometer, which is related to the gold core uh, of our nanocluster. And we saw them actually, uh, as in 3D dimension at the beginning, then when is it removing some of the ligands because of the attachment to the nano sheet and because the electron beam, we saw a two dimension actually of this uh, nano cluster. This will help us to understand what's the structure and how it looks like our uh, gold nine cluster when it's deposited on nano sheet. And this is have been actually uh, also, uh, this is another images with the same, with the same gold nano cluster, and we have it's it has been compared actually with the DFT calculation, the density functional theory, where we have this kind of structure. Actually, it's on the lower relative energy. We have it, we have it with the ligands, and once they attach, uh, they attach the ligands. We have it on the two D dimension. That's mean when we, when, when we deposit this gold nano cluster, it has been changing uh, in terms of the deposition. There is one structure, which is the isomer here, we couldn't find because this is actually a transition state and it's hard actually maybe to visualize by the STEM. As far as you know, this is the lowest number of the gold nano cluster has been seen actually in literature. The, uh, the record was before us is gold 39, which is the gold uh, cluster has 39 atoms and visualizing a very small uh, gold, uh, just nine gold atoms is very hard and very challenging because you already deposit some energy from the electron beam itself. And this is energized as a cluster and it's very hard actually to identify this gold another cluster. Uh, we know the, the world is not perfect and uh, that's why we get some aggregation already because of the electron beam, but also we get some fragment of this nano cluster where we have like atoms, one single atoms, dimer and trimer of these three. And these are like just the three atoms. And we report them also with the XPS finding. This is the gold nine cluster. It's exactly what has been reported for our previous papers using the cyclotron itself. Which means that at the beginning, we have like a 3D uh, structure with the ligands. When is it interact with the surface or any of the ligands removed is changing the structure of this nano cluster. We also deposit them on the B25, which is the titanium nanoparticles. And we can show a different actually before removing the ligands and after removing the ligands. And we saw some aggregation. Uh, and this is also the STEM images of uh, uh, the large one is the P25. Well, is, this one is the gold nine deposit actually on the top of the P25, which is the uh, titan nanoparticles. We usually uh, trying to avoid the aggregation as much as we can, because this is not our actually target. And this is a huge challenge in nanoparticles, even in nanoscale, because you will end with a different electronic structure. And there is no actually benefit of being a precise and then gold uh, on the nanocluster itself. We need to target a specific regime size to have it doing a specific catalytic reaction uh, in, the, in the reaction itself. And to actually measuring this agglomeration, 
we need as such of the scanning probe microscope, like uh, atomic force microscope and ST and scanning tunneling microscope to measure uh, the degree of the aggregation when we deposit them on the metal oxide itself. And we deposit them on titania nano sheet and we uh, we checking before annealing and after annealing. And after annealing, when we remove actually the ligands itself, uh, we have we remove it at 200 degree for like 20 minutes, and we be sure we are not actually having any phosphine. And we confirm that by the XPS itself, where we don't have any peaks of the phosphorus after we annealed and remove the ligands itself. And the lateral resolution AFM is showing the cluster size uh, for our gold nine, uh, gold nine nano cluster. And we saw actually quite of aggregation after annealing. And um, this is related to removing the ligands and giving the nano cluster the organize itself to have uh, to actually have it on the different size. The gold nine on titan nano sheet we saw as a deposit we have uh, we have uh, as a deposit we have around like one one point two nanometer. This is with the ligands, and when we anneal uh, this gold nano cluster, we show them it's getting a higher on the on the height, and this is uh, quite of the annealing, and this is the aggregation degree for our gold uh, gold nine. We use also a scanning tunneling microscope. It's not the easy techniques actually to use. And uh, it's a bit challenging because you are getting the tip itself very close to the sample. It's just on the gap of one nanometer. And with any contamination, with any impurities, any kind of damage, you will lose actually the signal. And you also, uh, what we're doing in scanning tunneling microscope, we throw the tunneling as a current. Uh, uh, and this is the, the electrons jumping from, uh, from the tip itself to the sample uh, by reducing the bias voltage actually from the sample and trying to measure. The difference between the STM and the AFM, the AFM is looking for the lateral resolution itself and can be working on the ambient condition. But the STM is working in very ultra high vacuum and can be vary in the temperature as uh, as well. But we are looking for the electron uh, cloud itself because it's looking for the electron density itself. It's not anymore looking for the laterals like such the AFM. And this is why it's giving more and more high resolution by using the STM itself. We have uh, the titanium nanosheets. And this is titanium sheet. Uh, we measure them as a reference sample before and after annealing to see what kind of changing happen to the substrate before we deposit our gold nine. But once we deposit uh, our gold nine, we, we saw actually the gold nine before and after annealing. And this is uh, actually an imaging, a close imaging of a single, uh, a single nanocluster deposit on nano sheet using the STM itself. And we create a histogram from it. And we saw actually uh, the size is has been reduction. And this is related to the actually removing of the of the ligands itself from the nano cluster. And we tried also to using the XPS before and after anil to show actually the degree of the aggregation. We still have remaining, even after annealing, some isolated uh, gold nine, which being isolated, but we have also the aggregation of gold nine. But for sure, we don't have any phosphorus left, which is mean the ligands is containing the phosphorus itself is detached from the gold nine on the cluster. We also use atomic layer deposition, which is a uh, very thin of the titania deposit on, on, the, on the substrate with like a, a thickness of 100, 120 nanometer. And we study actually this kind of uh, nanocluster aggregation and the degree of aggregation on a different uh, titania uh, oxide. Like we tried the nano sheet and we tried B25 and now we tried the atomic layer 
position. And uh, we sputter this kind, create what, what's called the, uh, the oxygen defects. And um, this is on the substrate and to reduce uh, the aggregation itself. But even though we have some aggregation of this uh, gold nine cluster, and this is what's showing on the histogram because the size is increasing, the tail is increasing actually. And this is like a two different uh, methodology. We have the sputter ALD, we have the titanium sheet, but uh, the aggregation is uh, much stronger actually on the atomic layer deposition. Uh, the aggregation degree is much stronger compared with the nano sheet, which we include that nano sheet has more defects, which is can hang actually this gold nine to not be aggregated and can be used for the future for the catalytic reaction itself. For the photocatalyst, uh, the other groups actually in uh, University of Adelaide, they done actually some of the uh, photocatalytic reaction, especially by actually using, uh, using for the hydrogen production and for the water splitting to producing the hydrogen production. And this is the phenomena actually that we deposit the gold, uh, the gold on the top of the of the oxide surface to increase the catalytic reaction and to have this kind of exchange uh, on the top of the metal uh, metal core uh, to do the reaction of the catalytic reaction by the reduction of the of the water itself and producing the hydrogen and also for the reduction of the CO two emission and to get the methanol itself and. Uh, they create actually our group in Adelaide Uni, they create a reactor which we can perform actually the catalytic reaction itself. And um, this is a reaction actually can measure a very precise, a different in pressure, uh, producing by the hydrogen itself, and can measure a very amount actually of the of the of the hydrogen production reach the, to the micromoles. Uh, for the material itself. A primarily actual result is that the, we deposit the gold on the different, as I said, the different thing. Actually, they're showing the heat treated of the gold nine on P25. It's uh, even is getting partial agglomeration but it's showing actually uh, when we have uh, loss of the ligands and there is no aggregation degree effective uh, gold, uh, gold nine deposit on the titania, showing a very nice result of the production of the hydrogen. So very advanced nanomaterials that can be uh, targeting and atoms not just uh, even in nanomaterials scale and can have more precise, more uh, fundamentals. There's a huge challenge in keeping and studying these kinds of small atoms and manipulating these atoms. But with the more practice, with the more experience, uh, this field, uh, I guess this is a future, actually of using this kind of a precise atoms to avoid any wasting materials and reusing this kind of materials and knowing exactly by this uh, precise regime, how can we produce a very clean energy? Uh, this work has uh, lots of contributions from a different, uh, a different university and different institutes. Uh, all thanks goes, goes to them. And by this, I will end my presentation and welcoming for any question. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassan. Very nice presentations. So I saw in the chat room is already many questions. So I will open now for the for the question and answers. So please, if you have any question, you can raise or maybe just open your mic directly, and then you can ask directly to the Dr. Hassan. Anyone?
Oke, okay. Mr. Kyur, Kyurma. Please. I'm Miss. Ya, yeah. okay. I am a woman. Oke, okay, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I told you are Mr. So, Miss Kyurma. Ya, yeah, you can ask direct itu Dr. Hasan. Um, Oke, okay. hello, good. Dengan Mr. Hasan, greetings. My name is Miss Kyurma. I was graduate from Bandung Institute of Technology in chemistry majoring. And then I have only one question, but actually I wa- I have a second one. So the first one is, um, which one uh, from your method with um, STEM or whether from what you have explained as the qualitative or the quantitative ones. I'm sorry that I don't get the differences. And then the second one, is it available to the drug discovery um, research? Okay, thank you for your explanation. I hope that my sounds could hear and clear. Yes, it is quite good. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah thanks a lot. Uh, this is very nice questions. Uh, yes, not all of them is uh, quanti- uh, quantitative actually measurement. Like for example, the means which I didn't uh, discuss is qualitative measurement, while the XPS is a direct measurement that you can figure out. Uh, this cluster, I mean, nanoparticles has been used in drugs delivery and uh, different things. But in our gold uh, nine, actually, which, which we has a chemical synthesizer, we're targeting the, to being as a catalyst. But uh, it hasn't been used for, for the drug delivery itself. Okay, that, that's all, Dr. Hassans? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so next question is from the MKH in the chat room, do you foresee any other potential application for such a nine or so other than photocatalytic, photocatalyst? Yeah, I mean, the gold line itself as, an, as without the stabilized the ligands, yet it will be using, uh, for example, for the plasmonic effect and can be using for the sensing and other, other application can be used as well. It's, uh, It's about the way actually uh, we actually synthesize the, them and we synthesize them to having this ligands to or protection and to, to make it more stable uh, for for the chemical use and for, for a longer time. But yes, definitely can be used for another application. Okay, that's good. Any other questions? Please raise hand and then let me know so you can just open your mic. You can ask directly to Dr. Hassans. Anyone? Okay. Uh, probably I will try to find the question in the chat room. Oh, Ms. Tirma uh-huh, is already asked directly to you. So, So, uh, Dr. Hassan, I'm uh, I'm wondering how you make. I mean, you, we, uh, how you make the atomic uh, gold move to this side, to this side, to this side. You, I'm I believe using kind of STM or other thing. Could could you explain to us in uh, in the uh, how it works, how do you move any kind of that atom to this side, to the other side and other things. So could you take, uh, could you explain to us about that? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I mean, uh, synthesizing mm. this kind of precise called nanocluster is not that easy. Okay. And this is uh, our collaboration team on New Zealand 
uh, in Canterbury University, they synthesize this organic cluster. They have published in, in Nature uh, about this actually synthesis. It's actually uh, getting uh, uh, starting with the uh, bulk uh, gold, then trying to reach uh, to a few atoms, 100 atoms, then getting down to the precise atoms they, they need. It's need a very involved uh, experience actually on the chemist to have this kind of uh, of a precise gold nanocluster. And not even that, having a purified uh, gold nanocluster on the precise size, like eight or nine or eleven, is very, very difficult. And that's why they need a multiple purification. They need multiple purification of the ice for the mass spectroscopy to have a when I was at with you, you made some kind of flower, right? From the nano gold. Yeah. Yes, yes, you are right. That Am I was correct? some part of my looks like a flower. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And definitely, I mean, a different shape can have a different. Uh... Hello. Hello. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could you? Yeah, could you yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, you are right. I mean, different shape will have even different properties, mm -hmm. either physical or oh. chemical properties for the material mm -hmm. itself. Okay. Good. Yes. So, uh, any other participants have questions? Just raise hand. Maybe Dr. Harris. I see Dr. Harris in here. Also, previously, I also you see Dr. Aramel. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Aramel is a master actually for the STM. Yeah, Dr. Amel is expert in <laughs> STM. So maybe Dr. Amel, could you uh, give any uh, kind of what what you what you feel about the presentation of Dr. Hassan? Dr. Aramel still in Singapore, I think. In any ways. Yeah. Mm. So, any other questions from the participant? No worries. Oh, no worries. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, brothers, I think uh, your presentation is very good uh, and also very nice. It's opened my mind so you can make cluster of nano gold with a, a u9 is very small right it's at the a u thing is small so, so as far as you know is the smallest one right and then, um, yeah so it's uh, good for us in indonesia <laughs> so we can go oh, is we know that uh, uh, it's not easy, of yeah. course, but it, you see University of Canterbury and other institutions such as uh, Saudi Aramco and other things. Yeah. So you have a uh, closing statement about your presentation and, and then about your, maybe uh, you, are, you are open for collaboration with the Indonesian Institute or maybe in Indonesian University or other things. I mean, we want to know about that one. Uh, it's actually, I mean, uh, the, the motivation of my presentation today, it's toward the hydrogen production. And okay, uh, even, even the kingdom here, I mean, uh, we're starting now one of the largest uh, world actually building hydrogen plant uh, in New York. Mm. And this is uh, with a huge cost of 700 billion 
it's wow. a very huge cost actually on one of the largest uh, plant uh, on the world i mean this is uh, the future actually i mean to the clean energy and the green energy as well mm. okay so, um, okay, so I thanks think a lot, guys. Enough. Uh, yeah, also, uh, yeah. You know, we, we are, we are, thanks having you in here. It's no worries, no worries. It's my pleasure. <laughs> no worries. Okay, it's also my pleasure. Thank so, you. Okay, I think it's enough for the main session. So, I uh, go to the uh, next session. So, please, Mr. Fikri, to handle this, the sessions. Thank you, all the participants, also. <laughs> Our special guest, Dr. Hassan Al Fahdan. Thanks a lot. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Alfian Novianto, and our speakers, uh, Dr. Hassan, for today's webinar. And wants to get the certificate can you can directly uh, okay you can see the share screen so just directly uh, let me see <laughs> Mengisi linknya langsung. Oke, okay. quiz nano talk 29. Oke, okay. uh, before we close today's uh, webinar, you can see the our social media for more inform for your information. We have a YouTube channel called Science Thing and Instagram. Our Instagram Science Thing Indonesia, our website center.nano.org.id, or you can email us if you have uh, further questions about uh, nanotechnology at cs at nano.org.id. Uh, we will provide the presentation from the speakers uh, as fast as we can. So please uh, be patient. Thank you once again for attending today's webinar. Uh, see you next week. Okay. Makasih semuanya ya. Oke. Okay. Kasih semuanya. Assalamualaikum. Ya, terima kasih Bapak. Terima
uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian uh, kami mohon maaf kembali ternyata ada kendala pada link absensi uh, jadi untuk Bapak Ibu yang sudah mendaftar kemarin melalui mau pendaftaran di awal semuanya nanti akan kami kirimkan sertifikat dan materinya jadi uh, mohon ditunggu untuk pengiriman sertifikat dan materi dari uh, our main speaker tadi Terima kasih Bapak Ibu semuanya. Selamat sore. Sore. Terima kasih. Selamat sore. Oke. Jin Leaf ye. Terima kasih.